The following video you're about to see contains a tiny bit of strong language. Watch at your own risk. Parental discretion is advised. Yippee-ki-yay, motherfucker. Let's talk about Die Hard. Big days, entertainment rankings and reviews. So greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name's Duel, better known to you as the Big D, and this time around, I bring to you a review of the 1988 action flick Die Hard, released by Fox. Directed by John McTiernan, written by Jeb Stewart, and Stephen E. D'Souza. Based on the 1979 novel Nothing Lasts Forever by Roderick Thorpe. The film stars Bruce Willis along with Alan Rickman, Alexander Godunov, and by Bedelia. Now it follows New York City Police Detective John McClane who is caught up in a terrorist takeover of a Los Angeles skyscraper while visiting his estranged wife. It also features Reginald Vell Johnson, William Atherton, Paul Gleason, and Hart Bochner. They are in supporting roles. Now this film is factually uh, considered to be like a Christmas flick, but, well, it is often named one of the best Christmas films. But anyway, it revitalized the action genre, largely due to its depiction of McClane as a vulnerable and fallible protagonist. Now, originally, the, originally, they wanted Arnold Schwarzenegger to do the role, considering after he had done Predator and Commando for the studio, but he turned it down, and, and, it, and they even went to Sly himself, Sylvester Stallone, but... They turned it down as well, so they gave it to Willis. And this was the film that put him on the map, considering he was already big on television, most notably on ABC's Moonlighting at the time. Anyway, he was paid $5 million for his involvement, placing him among Hollywood's highest paid actors. Anyway, this was just so incredible. So let's get into the story. On Christmas Eve, New York City Police Department Detective John McClane arrives in L.A., hoping to reconcile with his estranged wife, Holly, at a party held by her employer, the Nakatomi Corporation. He is driven to the plaza by a limo driver, Argyle, who offers to wait for McClane in the garage. While McLean changes clothes, the tower is seized by German radical Hans Gruber and his heavily armed team, including Carl and Theo. Everyone in the tower is taken hostage except for McLean, who slips away. Gruber is posing as a terrorist to steal six, the $640 million in untraceable bearer bonds in the building's vault. He murders executive Joseph Takagi after failing to extract the access code from him. He tasks Theo with breaking into the vault. The terrorists are alert to McLean's presence, and one of them, Tony, is sent after him. McLean kills Tony and takes his weapon and radio, which he uses to contact the skeptical LAPD, and Sergeant Al Powell is sent to investigate. Meanwhile, McClane kills more terrorists and recovers their bag of C4 and detonators. Having found nothing amiss, Powell is about to leave until McClane drops a terrorist corpse onto his car. After Powell calls for backup, a SWAT team attempts to storm the building but is assaulted by the terrorists. McClane throws some C4 down an elevator shaft, causing an explosion that kills some of the terrorists and ends the assault. Holly's co-worker, Harry Ellis, attempts to negotiate on Gruber's behalf. But when McClane refuses to surrender, Gruber kills Ellis. While checking the explosives on the roof, Gruber encounters McClane and pretends to be an escaped hostage. McClane gives Gruber a gun, and Gruber attempts to shoot McClane, but finds the weapon is unloaded and is saved only by the intervention of other terrorists. McLean escapes but is injured by shattered glass and 
lost and loses the detonators. Outside, FBI agents take control. They order the power to be shut off, which, as Gruber had anticipated, disables the final vault lock so his team can collect the bonds. All right, now for the final act and ending. You know the procedure like always. Five seconds to sub this video. Go to the description box below and fast forward to the time below. If you've seen the movie already, please continue on. Here we go. Okay, you've been warned. The FBI agrees to Gruber's demand for a helicopter, intending to send gunship helicopters to eliminate the group. McLean realizes Gruber plans to blow the roof to kill the hostages and fake his team's deaths. Carl, enraged by the death of his brother, Tony, attacks McLean as apparently killed. Gruber sees a news report by Richard Thornburg on McLean's children and deduces that he is Holly's husband. The hostages are taken to the roof while Gruber keeps Holly with him. McLean drives the hostages from the roof just before Gruber detonates it and destroys the approaching FBI helicopters. Meanwhile, Theo retrieves a van from the parking garage but is neutralized by Argyle, who has been following events on his car radio. A weary and battered McLean finds Holly with Gruber and his remaining henchmen. McLean surrenders to Gruber and is about to be shot, but grabs his concealed service pistol taped to his back and uses his last two bullets to wound Gruber and kill his accomplice. Gruber crashes through a window, but grabs onto Holly's wristwatch and makes a last-ditch attempt to kill the pair before McLean unclasps the watch and Gruber falls to his death, which it's really something. I tell you what. Outside, Carl ambushes McLean and Holly, but is killed by Powell. Holly punches Stormberg when he attempts to interview McLean before Argyle crashes through the parking garage door in the limo and drives McLean and Holly away together. End of story. And as he says in the movie before this bit, this last act, you be kai, motherfucker. Okay, enough said. So what did I think of Die Hard? Now, I've seen it a few times. I did revisit the film a couple of months ago. I gotta say, it's really something. It's probably one of the coolest action pad movies ever. Upon its release in July of 1988, initial reviews were mixed. Criticism was focused on its violence, plot, plus Wills' performance. But however, they praised McTiernan's direction and Rickman's charismatic portrayal of the villain. However, which this is what really made Rickman a big star, considering he was only big in um, stage plays or something like that. Anyway, the film received four Academy Award nominations, and it elevated Willis to lead man status and made Rickman a celebrity. It's been critically re-evaluated and is now considered one of the best, one of the greatest action films and is often named one of the best Christmas films, as I've already mentioned. <sighs> yep. But who cares? I loved this film. This was really something. It was awesome. This was a blast from start to finish. And I really enjoyed it. Our cast was absolutely good. I really did enjoy Bruce Willis' portrayal as John McClane, who, of course, he'd go on to a, play that role again for sequels. The second one will come out two years later, but I'll be reviewing more of the Die Hard franchise later on down the road. Alan Rickman's portrayal of Hans Gruber, definitely really good. See, Alexander Godunov as Carl, really good. By Bedelia as Holly. She's good. And let's see. LAPD Sergeant Al Powell is played by Reginald Val Johnson, who the following early the following year would become an even bigger star on the sitcom Family Matters. Paul Gleason plays Dwayne T. Robinson, LAPD de Deputy Chief. Devereaux White plays Argyle. William Atherton plays Stormberg. Clarence Gilliard. Well, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that's Clarence Gilliard Jr., of course. Who recently play, played Sundown in Top Gun. 
And of course, um, he's appeared in various TV shows. He'd also be later be big as um, Conrad McMaster's in the, the last few seasons of TV's Matlock. And also he appeared would also appear on Walker, Texas Ranger as well, playing Harry Ellis, a Nakatomi executive as Her as Hart Bachner. And as Takagi, it, it's James Shigeta. So anyway, the cast isn't too bad. The action I'd say was still pretty good. Uh, I can understand why people what critics were mixed and what have you. But nevertheless, overall, Die Hard became a big success for Fox, and it was really something. Yep. Yep. So anyway, it did pretty well when it came out. And so far, it done pretty well. It made it became the seventh highest grossing film of AA behind Crocodile Dundee 2, Twins, Big, Coming to America, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, and Rain Man. Anyway, the film went on to make about in between. 139 to 141 million worldwide. So anyway, Die Hard proved to have some good action. Its score by Michael Common was pretty good too. So anyway, with a pretty good score, good action scenes, and and a great big performance from Bruce Willis, Alan Rickman, cast wasn't too bad. So in the end, would I recommend Die Hard? The answer is definitely hell yeah. This is one flick you definitely cannot afford to miss. It is on physical media. The film's also available um, on various streaming services if you can find them. It's been recently been seen on Prime and Peacock and I think it's on Tubi now, but or maybe IMDb TV, but but just look it up if you don't have it. But but I think you should still get this. I don't have it, but I've seen Die Hard, and it's a great action flick. This is probably going to rank up there with some of my favorite Bruce Willis films. I have a few, but I'll have to check, look it over, and maybe one day, mind you, I might do a ranking. But I can't guarantee you that. Not yet, anyway. So anyway, what are your thoughts on Die Hard? Uh, and do you really do you consider this to be a Christmas film? You can tell me. Please feel free to tell me in the comment section below. If you like this video, click the like button, subscribe to my channel, and be a part of the Big D Nation. Join me next time when I bring to you a review of The Kingsman: The Secret Service. Yeah, I'm reviewing the two movies in order to promote The Kingsman, which opens next Wednesday in theaters. So thanks for watching, and if you like this, you may want to consider checking out some of my reviews for these other action pack flicks. In the upper left-hand corner is my review of the 2001 remake of Ocean's Eleven, which that needs more views. It's only got a measly three views, while most of the other videos I've done so far this month have got done bad. Come on, you guys. Get off your lazy butts and watch that, alright? Sorry, I didn't mean to be all pushy and what have you. In the upper right-hand corner, you can check out something really big. You can see uh, my review of another film that Alan Rickman did. And he and the first of May he would appear in, in Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. You can also check out my other Harry Potter films in, in the playlist if you'd like. Or if you want something that's not action packed but was pretty brutal in one part, go to the bottom left hand corner and see my recent spoiler free review of Steven Spielberg's take of the musical West Side Story. And the bottom right hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe if you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc. Then I'm your guy. Thank you for watching. Until next time on the Big D saying, see ya.